after effects, the first thing we're gonna do is right click, click new solid, and then we're just gonna type this in as iPhone 3D model and click OK. Next, we're gonna go to effects and presets, and we're gonna type in element. Element is part of the video copilot third party plugin for After Effects, and it's probably the best 3D software for After Effects. This tutorial does require element to do that 3D iPhones, so if you don't have element, do your own research to figure out how to download it for yourself. Grab element and put it onto our solid. From here, we're gonna go up to scene interface and click on scene setup. Now the free route to go about doing these animations is you can do your own research to try to find a free iPhone model online. The model will need to be a .obj file for it to work inside Element. Now the biggest problem with this is sometimes when you import it inside Element, it'll only import with one material, meaning that you won't be able to customize the phone and you won't be able to customize the screen on the iPhone. So if you guys want to save a headache and save a bunch of time, I just created an all-in-one 3D iPhone editing pack that includes a high quality iPhone Pro 3D model that can be easily imported into After Effects and be fully customizable to your liking. It also comes with an easy to customize iPhone display so you can create any animation on the screen that you like. If you don't have Element, there's also a no plugin version of this pack where anybody with After Effects can use and achieve really awesome 3D iPhone animation. The pack includes high quality iPhone models, project file with pre-made iPhone animations and templates, text bubbles, emojis, backgrounds, iPhone sound effects, and more all-in-one pack if you want to make the best 3D iPhone animations and save yourself a bunch of time. Make sure you guys go down in the description to my store to go check it out. This is where we're going to be importing the 3D model and to do this we're going to go over to import and then we're going to locate where I have mine which is inside my iPhone 3D model pack. We're just going to go find the model inside here and then we're going to find the iPhone Pro Max 3D model dot element 3D. We're going to click on it like open and we're just gonna be scaling this down so we can see what's going on once you've uploaded it in you have a fully already made 3d iphone inside over here you can see all the different materials where you can change and customize how the phone you're liking so if we go to like the iphone back and if you want to change it to like a gold iphone you can or if you want a green blue chrome anything you want in this case we're just going to keep it how it is which is black and once you've imported your 3D model like this, we're going to click on OK. Now we have our 3D iPhone inside our comp. Next, we're going to be customizing the screen on the 3D iPhone. And to do this, the best way to do it is just import this iPhone Pro Max screen display size to get the right comp size. So we're just going to import that, click on it, and then we're going to drag it into its own composition. And pretty much what we're doing here is all we need is just a composition that is 940 by 2000. I like to drag in the screen display size because sometimes you will forget what the actual composition size that you need is. So it's just easy just to drag it in. And then once you have your comp, you can just delete this. Now, anything we put in here will be on the actual 3D iPhone. All I'm going to do is just double click and I'm going to import the project file for all the assets to create the animations. And then inside this project file, we're just going to go down to iPhone message displays and then click on message display two. drag this in. Now we have the interface for the messenger. Free way to do this is just to go on your phone and take a screenshot of your messages and then just import it inside After Effects and go from there. For me, once we have the interface in, the next thing we wanna do is do the animations for the text bubbles. We're gonna go down to text bubble animations and we're gonna click on which is the received. Add this in, change it to blue so we can see what is going on. And then once you double click on it, inside here, this is where we can customize the text. Click on, double click on it and we're gonna click like and subscribe smiley face if the text is just slightly off all you have to do is click p to open up the position move it over so it kind of fits perfectly inside the text bubble and we're gonna go back to the screen display and as you can see it's updated and then from here we're just going to change the scale to 42 and then we're just going to drag the text bubble where a text bubble would be on your iphone now we need to add the sending one which is the blue one and to do that, we just go over here, iPhone message bubble sender, click it, drag it in. We change this to green just so we can say organized. And then we're gonna open this and then we're gonna go and come in here, click on the text layer, change the text. That's what I'm saying. Text is just a little off again. Just click P and move the position over and go back to our screen display to change the size to 42. And then we're just gonna drag this over here. 
And now we're gonna be adding this to the 3D iPhone. And to do this, we're gonna go back to our main composition, which is this one. Pretty much we wanna find this comp inside our projects and it's this one right here. So we're just gonna add it to our main composition. Next, we're just going to hide it and then go over to our iPhone 3D model and go over to effects and controls. Go down to custom layers, custom texture maps. And then on layer one, we wanna click on the actual display, which is layer one. Once you've got this far, we can go up to scene setup. We want to go down to where we find the material that it says screen display. And then we're going to go down to diffuse on the textures and then click this little drop down and click custom layer one. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Easy fix. Puzzle code in my head. Now it's on the wall. Depending on what version of element you have, it might just be black or white or nothing's happening. And don't freak out. Everything is fine. Just click OK and then click OK again outside of Element, and boom, now you can see we have the animation on our iPhone. Now, anything we change inside our screen display will pop up on our phone. Now that we have our 3D iPhone, and now we have our screen display all set up, now it really just comes down to adding all that sauce and all the cool settings to this. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to group one and go to particle look. And inside here on the particle size, all this does is just bring down the size of it so we can kind of see what is going on. First thing I always do is if you want the highest quality 3D model for when you render, you wanna go down to output and then on multi sampling, you wanna change this to 32 and super sampling to eight. Now, depending on how good of a computer it is, this will definitely hinder on your renders and your previews. So just be careful, just play around with it. This really adds a better quality to your overall Element 3D models. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is the lighting. And just to come into the particle replicator and go down to rotation, we're just gonna rotate this model so we can kind of see the kind of like reflections and lighting. So this is very default lighting. And if you wanna change the lighting of this, go over to scene setup and then go up to environment. And this is what the basic lighting will look like. But if you wanna customize it, you can always just click load from file. And inside my pack, you just wanna find a HDRI that you like. In this case, we're gonna use this one. And then we'll click okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a simple background. So we're just gonna right click, click new, solid. We're just gonna name this background. Then we're just gonna make sure it's on the bottom layer. And then we're just gonna change this to a different color so we know the organization. Next, we're just going to add a gradient ramp. And on the gradient ramp, we're just gonna change this to a radial. Then we're gonna move the black to the middle. We're going to change the start color to like a dark blue. And then we're going to change the end color to a black. And then we're going to grab the end ramp and just drag it down. Kind of get this cool, like just kind of very chill background color. So next, we're just going to put the rotation back to zero. Next, we're going to be adding in some lighting. So we're going to right click, click new light. And then we're going to change this to a ambient light. And click OK. Emphasize the screen so you can kind of see the screen better. Now, the next step is we're going to be animating this iPhone. We're going to go to the start of our composition and then click on our iPhone 3D model. And then inside group one, we're going to want to put a keyframe on the position X and Y, position Z, and then on the rotations, we're gonna all put stopwatches on these. So these five settings are the main settings to create the animation. Next, we're gonna click U to open up our keyboard so we can see the animations. So the first thing we wanna do is pretty much have the Z distance back a little bit. Put the Z distance to about 3600. And then we're gonna go to the position X and Y and grab the Y and drag it off screen. So the animation starts kind of popping into our screen. Next, we're gonna go about ahead about one second and then bring the position X and Y, bringing this back to 1080. Next, we're gonna go down to the Y rotation and we're gonna want on this number right here, we're just gonna click this to one. And from here, this is where you guys can kind of play around with any of these attributes you want to kind of get a cool look. So we can kind of change it however we like. Bring this over a little bit like this. Next, we're gonna have the phone zoom in a lot. So we're gonna go ahead about almost a whole nother second. And then we're gonna grab the position Z, drag it in crazy. To about right here. And then we want to have it focus on the top section. So we're gonna grab the Y, bring it down. And then I always like to add like a really spicy like rotation to this on the Y rotation. So we're gonna go something like 
this and then bring this to z distance actually the, grab the x grab the z and then i say we bring it in even more and obviously we want to have the centered in the screen so we're gonna grab the position x and y bring this over here we want to have it and down to this so we're just going to do the opposite on the y bring this over grab the z and then grab the position x and y bring it over and then obviously our plan is to have it centered in the screen so bring this down so it's right in the center and then we can also add more spice and have it like zoom in more now we want to add a third text bubble just to keep the animation going. So we're just going to click on our dis our screen display size. We're just going to double click on it. And inside here, we're going to add another text bubble so we can add in the number two. Add this in, double click on it. Inside here, we're going to customize whatever text we want. Blah, blah, blah. And then we're just going to change the position of it. And then go back to our discrete or screen display size. And then we're going to do the same thing where we put the scale to the same size as the others. And then we're just going to move it over. So now, once we've added in our third bubble, if we go back to our 3D animation, now it pops into our screen. So that's simple. But now we're going to go ahead another couple half seconds and we're going to go down to our model and we're just going to change these settings again. I like to do this kind of like teeter tottering, kind of like how the phone kind of rotates. So we're going to keep this going. And then we're going to change the Z distance. A lot of these settings are just really playing around, kind of like kind of just swiping left and right, seeing kind of what they're doing. I think that's the best part about these animations is they can be very customizable kind of to however your liking is. I like to just have fun with it, kind of like just however kind of cool angles you can get with it. You know, like this looks like this is perfect here, but if you want to change like the X rotation, you can make it kind of more like kind of more like more like this. <laughs> and then we're just going to add the Z distance. We're going to bring it out just a little bit. Next, we definitely want to have that nice saucy motion blur to it to add that spice. So right here on the motion motion blur, we're going to click on motion blur. If you don't see it. Toggle switches and modes. Now, if you play it back, you have this really saucy motion blur with your text animations on the 3D iPhone. Now, as you can see, the animation is just a little bit kind of clunky. Um, the simple way is just to highlight all of them and then just click F9 to easy ease them. Once you've easy eased them, the animation definitely is a lot smoother. Now, for what I do and from a more advanced standpoint, the best thing to do is if you have the flow plugin, you can add the same customizable animation to all of your keyframes. And to do this, all I do is just highlight them all and I add a graph that looks similar to this. And all I do is click apply. And this is what the animation looks like with this type of graph. Now, we did this kind of in reverse, but as you can see, the text messages with the motion doesn't add up exactly how we want it. Pretty much want the first message to pop up like right here. And to do this, it's pretty simple. Just go back to our screen display, double click on it. And then right on this, where it kind of has it on the one second, have our first text message pop up right then. We go back to our main composition. So it zooms into this. And then with this type of graph, we want the next one to pop up like right here. And then we're just gonna click on our screen display, grab our second one, drag it over and then go back. Now inside the pack with this screen display, you can customize whoever you want on the profile picture and it's pretty easy. So if you just go into your screen display, double click on our message display too. I'm just gonna double click on the profile photo, double click one more time. And now inside here, whatever photo you put in here will be on the actual iPhone. So we're just gonna add in like any, any picture we want, just scale it up to size. And now if we go back to this, you can see our little guy. Now, if you go back to our main composition, you can see them right there. And then right here on the name, this is where you can change it to whatever you would like. We're just going to put minion. Now we're just going to keep continuing adding in more and more sauce. So the next sauce I'm going to add to this is we're going to add some more customizability to the iPhone 3D model. So click on your model, go over to effects and controls. And these are types of settings that you guys can play around with. So if we go down to render settings, we go down to lighting. This is very quick lighting you can add get a different kind of feel for it. So if you go down to add lighting, 
add like a 360 light, which will drastically change the whole lighting around your iPhone. All these are different types of lighting you can add. In this case, I like to just keep it on single light. It's super simple. Another setting you can change is the ambient occlusion, which just, this just adds depth. It kind of adds shadows to your 3D model. So if we just enable the AIO, the AO, and then go down to the intensity, we can bring this up. And on the iPhone, it doesn't change a whole lot, but there is a little bit of shadows where it, there would be shadows, but it's definitely better for like 3D text for sure. I like to add our rays. So if we add like, s rays to this to our 3d model and then we go down to the rays length crank them up like crazy and then on the rate rays brightness bring them down a little bit now we just have very subtle rays coming out of the phone another effect would be any type of glow in this case i'm gonna use z glow i'm gonna change the width r to make it a little bit higher and then bring down the brightness so it's a little more subtle Next, I just added these particle backgrounds, which I'll chuck in a bunch of these backgrounds inside the modeling pack. So that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned a couple things about how to create this really dope 3D iPhone animations. If you did, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe down below. And let me know down in the comments what other tutorials you guys want to go see. On that note, I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.